Okay, so the survey for the expert class playtest is now open, uh, and I will be filling it out. Now, if you watched earlier this week, you know that I have some issues with the way these uh, surveys are put together. However, they are still the best way. We can provide feedback to Wizards of the Coast, so I recommend everyone fill them out so they can help shape the way that 1D&D &D will be in 2024. And I figured I'd make a video of me filling out the survey. So here we go. Not much to say here. I'll just fill these in and we will move on. Which of the following classes have you playtested? I haven't had a chance to playtest any of these options yet. How satisfied were you overall with the classes as presented in the article? So with the Bard, we saw that the Bardic Inspiration really changed so that you're using a reaction. My gut instinct is I'll like it, but I, I really have to playtest it to know that for sure. I didn't mind the way the new prepared spells work, though I do think you need an actual spell list rather than having you choose from this big arcane list and then you have to look at all the spell schools to know which ones bards can cast. Uh, I, I would like them to actually just have a list there for us. I kind of like the way Magical Secrets works now. It kind of hurts to have to wait to 11th level now instead of 10th to get your first Magical Secrets, but I'd like the mechanics of it, where you can actually change it. Uh, and so then at 11th level, of course, you could pick up to 6th level spells with it, but once you got to 13th level, you could pick 7th level spells with it, and I kind of like that feature of it. Also like that they improved the capstone. The capstone is definitely better now. Overall, I think the Bard is probably, in my opinion, a little bit better than the current version. So I would say that I'm pretty satisfied with this. Now here is the Ranger. Um, I think the Ranger did pretty well. The one thing that kind of bothers me about the Ranger is favored enemy seems like something you might dip for. So Ranger seems like a class that really, really looks like a one level dip now. You go in, you get your expertise, you get your Hunter's Mark without concentration, and you get full spellcasting level. Uh, so if I was playing any kind of spellcaster that uses a weapon, a one level ranger dip is kind of a must the way this is worked out. I would love to see if you're going to keep favorite enemy the way it is, maybe have it apply later than first level. I really like that a lot of the Tasha's optional class features for ranger, which generally I liked, are in here now as the base ranger class. So that to me is a big improvement. Uh, you know, improving the player's handbook ranger isn't hard because it has a lot of feel bad features on it uh, and they are basically gone here. These are all just better. So overall, I still think they did a good job with the ranger and I do like it a lot more than the player's handbook version. Then we have the rogue. Uh, now, there were things in the rogue that I thought were fine. The one thing that really bothers me about the rogue is if you are not going to have sneak attack work more than once per round, so you can't do the like reaction tricks to get a second sneak attack in a round, you know, I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is making it so you can't hold your action to do a sneak attack later in the round, because often a rogue is going to do that. They're going to maybe win initiative because they have the high dexterity, so they're going to move up to the enemy, and then they're going to wait for, you know, the paladin to rush up beside them so that they can get their sneak attack. So they hold their action. You can't do that anymore. And that, to me, is really disappointing. I was also disappointed not to see steady aim from Tasha's worked into the base rogue. So it remains an optional class feature and relies on you using Tasha's, which you may not be doing after 2024 anyways. Uh, so you kind of have this subtle strikes, but it's not till 13th level. Uh, you know, if you're going to have that feature, and I don't mind that, it's pack tactics. Uh, I think pack tactics can work on a rogue, but maybe just bring it way earlier. Like I would say fourth or fifth level. I, I like the new stroke of luck. I like the fact that you can get an auto crit now with the rogue. The rogue I'm more iffy on. So with the bard, I would say I am definitely satisfied. It's not perfect, but it's good. The Ranger, again, satisfied, again, not perfect, but good. The Rogue, I am dissatisfied currently. How satisfied are you with the elements of the Bard as presented in the article? Well, creating a Bard, um, I would say I am satisfied with that. Multiclassing the Bard, it's the old rules, and I'm fine with those. 
Uh, Bardic Inspiration, I would say, like I said, my gut instinct is I like it being a reaction. I, I just prefer that. You're taking a step out. Uh, so I would say I'm very satisfied with that. Spell casting. Um, so it's a mix. Uh, I don't mind the new preparation mechanic. I don't like that we don't get a proper spell list. Overall, I would still say I'm satisfied with that. Expertise is fine. They got that before. It just kind of changed when you get it. Uh, Songs of Restoration. Yep, fine with that. Uh, the subclass. Um, is it that just when they receive it? I'm curious whether they're going to actually go over... I assume they'll go over the College of Lore. Uh, so receiving it at third level is fine. Feet gained at fourth level. You know, in 1 D&D, I was kind of hoping you'd get feats more often. Uh, so <laughs> feats gained at fourth level. I I'm still satisfied with it, but... But, you know, I wish they had gone ahead and made it so that you can get feats even more quickly than you could before. Jack of all trades being moved to so much later. I, I'm i okay with that. Also, jack of all trades not affecting things like initiative and counter spells and that kind of thing. I think I'm okay with that as well. I suspect that's how it was always supposed to work. Uh, so I'm going to say I'm satisfied with that. All right. Subclass feature. I assume, again, that's when you get it. I am happy with them doing, they kind of did this uh, standardized subclass feature gaining. So all the different classes in this playtest got subclass features at the exact same levels. I think they might do that for the rest of the classes. And if they do, I like that. Um, those long waits uh, we, we sometimes saw with the bard or the rogue, um, these... Sorcerer has it too, actually, uh, you, where you get a feature and then it's a long, long time before you get another feature. I, I like that they're looking at removing that. Uh, so Font of Inspiration, it's slightly better than it was before, um, and it's fine. Uh, I think you gain it later now. Let me just verify that. Yep, we get it at 7th level instead of 5th level. I'm still okay with that. Uh, feet, yeah, expertise, yeah, subclass feature, magical secrets, very satisfied with that. Uh, if he gained 12th level is fine, subclass feature, further magical secrets, feet. I like the new superior bardic inspiration. And the epic boons I thought were just not very epic. They just didn't feel like they were powerful enough and I kind of wish that they had been you know class specific so I'm okay with you know you having a capstone where you choose your capstone I kind of like that uh, but I wish there were like bard capstones and ranger capstones and rogue capstones instead of here's capstones that any of them could pick uh, and prepared spells I was fine with so I've written I like the reaction inspiration I also like the subclass provides features at four different levels. I think the class needs an individual spell list rather than looking on the right school of spells on the arcane list. Epic boons don't seem very epic, and I prefer a bard capstone that was unique to bards. I also like the new mechanic for magical secrets. How satisfied are you with the elements of the College of Lore subclass as presented in the article? So a quick refresher, uh, so we're going to get bonus proficiencies at third level, uh, the lore bard used to get this as well, cutting words, same thing, they used to get it as well, uh, and it's pretty much the same, uh, cutting inspiration replaces the additional magical secrets that lore's got, so this makes your inspiration a little bit better, uh, and then 10th level makes your cutting words do damage. And then at 14th level, you can use your inspiration on your own ability checks. I gotta say, overall, I mean, it really hurts to lose additional magical secrets. I don't see any real, like, features here that grab me. Um, and also, this isn't really all that specialized in lore. I mean, the bonus proficiencies technically do improve your lore, and that would be one feature. Uh, and then cutting words, of course, has nothing to do with lore. Cutting inspiration has nothing to do with lore. Improved cutting words has nothing to do with lore. Pure the skill, you might use it to improve your lore checks or your study checks, I guess. Um, and so it just doesn't feel like there's a lot of flavor 
to this class anymore. Um, and so I, I kind of feel like they've, they've washed it and it kind of feels bland now. So I am dissatisfied with it. Uh, I like the bonus proficiencies. Cutting words is fine. Uh, cutting inspiration, I don't know why it's there. And same thing with improved cutting words. Imperial skill is, is fine. And I said College of Lore seems really bland to me. Where are the features that have the flavor of a bard specialized in gathering lore? What does better inspiration or cutting words that does damage have to do with lore? I don't get it. How satisfied are you with the elements of the ranger as presented in the article? Creating a ranger is fine. Multiclassing. So the big change here was that you now round up when you multiclass your ranger for uh, determining spell casting. And, you know, I'm fine with that. Now, expertise was new to the ranger. Uh, they could get expertise once with an optional class feature in Tasha's, but... Uh, having it as a base feature, and they eventually get four of them, that is definitely new, and I'm fine with it being on a ranger. Favored enemy, I think they shouldn't have it at first level. Um, I think that's a mistake if you're going to keep it the way it is. And I should mention that the Concentration Free Hunter's Mark was presented in the Unearthed Arcana for the optional class features for Tasha's, and then they changed it to our current Favored Foe. Um, so I'm not sure if this one will stick either, but if they do, I don't think you can have it be first level. I'm happy with their spell casting, uh, fighting style. They removed, I believe it was dueling that they removed. Let me verify that. Yes. So now you have to choose archery defense or two weapon fighting. So they're really kind of shoehorning you into, if you're going to play melee, you've got to be a two weapon fighter, uh, which is kind of iconic for Ranger because of Drist. Um, I, I think I'm okay with it. Uh, the subclasses, same thing with the Bard. I like them being standardized. Uh, I'm fine with the feats, uh, extra attack. Yeah, that's fine. Roving gives you the improved movement. I like that. Uh, the feat gained at eighth level. Expertise again is fine. The subclass feature. Tireless allows you to get some temporary hit points after you take a rest. And you can decrease your exhaustion by one level on a short rest. Uh, and I'm fine with that. And the feet. The new Nature's Veil is even a little bit better because you can potentially get two rounds of improved invisibility out of it. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with it. I like that Feral Senses now gives you blind sight. So I'd say I'm very satisfied with that one. And then the feet. Uh, Foe Slayer got improved. But not by a lot. Uh, but, you know, I'm okay with it. And then the feet, and then the epic boon, not great. Uh, and prepared spells is good. And what I've said is I like seeing some of the op Tasha's optional class features worked into the base class. Favored enemy is probably too good to have as a first level feature. Maybe the fighting style should be level one and favored enemy could be level two. That's just one thought. Uh, you could also maybe move some other stuff around, uh, like something like roving or something, I don't know. All right, how satisfied are you with the elements of the Hunter subclass as presented in the article? I am dissatisfied. Hunter's Prey, uh, it used to be an option. Now you're just getting Colossus Slayer, which is okay, but not really flavorful. Uh, so yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. Hunter's Lore I like. Uh, I would say I'm very satisfied with that one. Multi-Attack I really dislike. I think that's just awful. That's the one where you... Uh, it basically gives you a third level spell that you have prepared. Uh, it's not a good spell, and it's just a preparation. You still have to use your spell slots to cast it. Now it gives you the option to downcast it, but of course it is less powerful when you downcast it as well. So it, it's not like this great feature. It's not really like a feature at all. And Superior's Hunter's Defense, uh, again, they've taken an, a selection away from you and just given you a standard. Um, so overall, yeah, I just wasn't a fan. Losing the selections from Hunter gives players fewer choices. I like the Hunter's lore feature though. Multi-attack is really bad. It's just a prepared spell with a downcasting option. And with favored enemy, I think the Ranger has enough of a spell slot tax to already access your features. Because remember that favored enemy does not let you cast Hunter's Mark for free. It's only concentration free. You still have to spend that spell slot. Uh, now they're having a second feature that if you want to use it at all, 
you've got to expend your spell slots. Uh, so you can have these rangers, and they're spending all their slots just to be able to do their base features um, and not cast ranger spells. Uh, and I think that's unfortunate design. All right, how satisfied are you with the elements of the rogue as presented in the article? Creating a rogue is fine. Multiclassing is fine. Expertise. Sneak attack, very dissatisfied, and I've explained why, uh, but I'll write it in the comments, of course, for wizards. Thieves can't is fine. Cunning action. Um, you know, I think they missed an opportunity with cunning action. If you're going to make jump an action, you should make cunning action be able to, you know, allow you to jump as a bonus action. But, I mean, I still think cunning action is fine. Uh, I like the way the subclasses are done and the feats, uh, this is all going to be kind of the same as uh, the previous classes. Uncanny dodge is fine. I don't like that evasion has been moved to ninth level. That feels really late. So, yeah, I'm not happy with that. And let's see. This is all going to be pretty much the same. Subtle strikes was a cool feature. I thought it should have been gained earlier. But I still like the feature, so I'm going to say that I like it, but I'll just put in the comments that I wish it was earlier. And uh, yeah, Slippery Mind gave you charisma saves as well now. Um, Elusive was pretty close to the same. I like the change to Stroke of Luck. Uh, and the Epic Boon, I felt, was not very epic. All right, and the Thief subclass is presented in the article. Well, let's see. We've got fast hands. Doesn't allow to, you to uh, use an object anymore. Uh, second story work. It, it, I I thought that was done just fine. Uh, they had to, of course, change it to deal with the new jump mechanics. And I thought they did fine with that. Supreme sneak was fine. Use magic device was really changed. Um, and it is far more specific now. Uh, but I did like getting the additional two mint slot. Um, overall, I'd say I'm satisfied. I had some mixed feelings on it. And Thief's Reflexes, two bonus actions. I mean, it's just such a letdown as a capstone. Um, but maybe the old capstone was too good. Uh, yeah. I, I'm going to say I'm dissatisfied with it. I just think two bonus actions. Like, what exactly are they doing with these bonus actions? Uh, obviously, they'll do a cunning action. What's the second? Maybe they should have some other cool bonus action worked into the class if you're going to give them two bonus actions so that it feels like you're really getting something. Um, yeah, fast hands. You got to give it some else then. It, it just doesn't give enough. Overall, I guess I'm dissatisfied. So I just said, without using an object, fast hands seems really lackluster. If the big feature is two bonus actions, maybe another good bonus action option should be included in the subclass. Um, now, it occurs to me you could do two cunning actions. That might be something you want to do. But uh, again, yeah, maybe something in the subclass to do with the bonus action. And I, I point out fast hands isn't that feature, but it could be if it could do more things. But as it is now, it's just not something that's all that exciting to be able to do on your turn. In fact, most of the things fast hands does... I don't see a big bonus in it being a bonus action because you're generally going to be doing this stuff out of combat. So whether it's a bonus action or your action, I don't think it makes a big difference. So yeah, this one is a disappointment to me. So I realized afterwards I forgot to leave my comments on the rogue. I was so focused on the subclass. Um, and there doesn't seem to be an option to go back and edit my responses. So I guess those comments didn't get submitted, which is unfortunate. All right. Do you use feats when playing 5th edition D&D? Yes, always. And I have not play tested any of the new feats. So I've edited out the part where I've uh, ranked these feats because it took me a long time to kind of think about each one. Uh, so I'm just going to go over how I uh, rank these. So ability score improvement is, is semantics as a feat. So that's fine. Actor I thought was fine. Athlete. I thought was a little on the weak side. Uh, I would like to see it boosted a bit. Really like the changes to Charger. Uh, crossbow Expert, I thought the dual wielder part of that. So there's three things that Crossbow Expert gives you in addition to the ability score increase. And the last one, the dual wielding, it's worded in such a way that I'm not sure how it's supposed to work. Um, and so I don't know how to rank it. 
Uh, defensive duelist, I thought, had a nice increase, and uh, so it has become a decent feat. Dual wielder, I thought, was lackluster. Uh, durable and elemental adept, I both thought had improvements that made me satisfied with them. I just gave dissatisfied across the board for epic boons um, because I just don't think they're tough enough. Uh, if they're going to be capstones, they need a little more potency. Um, for fighting styles, them being feats, again, is mostly semantics. Um, and the only one I was really dissatisfied with was great weapon fighting. And that's one that I thought needed to be changed, and they didn't change it. Um, grappler, I like the new Grappler, uh, so I gave it very satisfied. Great Weapon Master, so with Great Weapon Master and Sharpshooter, I can't give them any good feedback because they have not provided their design goals um, or context that we need to know whether the minus 5 plus 10 uh, mechanic being removed is a good thing or a bad thing. Um, and I'm not a big fan of the minus 5 plus 10 mechanic, but I feel like it needs to be replaced with something a little more than what they've done. Um, maybe, unless there's some kind of feats that build upon it uh, that do that kind of cool stuff later. I don't know. So yeah, I couldn't give a good answer for those ones. Heavily armored is potentially too weak, but again, we haven't seen the armor rules yet. If they're the same as 5th edition, then I don't think this is worth a feat because heavy armor just isn't a lot better than medium armor. However, if heavy armor is better than medium armor significantly in this edition, then it might be a good feat. So I, I was hesitant to say anything other than I don't know. Heavy armor master I thought was a good change, uh, so I was very satisfied with that. Inspiring leader is another one I don't know. I think inspiring leader is fine for sure at fourth level, uh, but it doesn't scale well. And it used to scale very well. And I, again, wonder if there are going to be other feats that build upon Inspiring Leader. And I don't know. So I didn't answer that one. Keen Mind, I really like the change. I think the study action is a bonus action, is a cool mechanic. Uh, lightly Armored, again, I don't know. Uh, can mages wear armor in this version? And if so, are there issues with spellcasting with a shield? We don't know these things. The Warcaster will potentially fix that regardless, but I do feel like I need more context to know if Lightly Armored is too powerful or not. Moving on, Mage Slayer, I thought they did a decent job with it. Medium Armor Master is very similar to what, what it was before, and that's fine. Mounted Combatant, I thought it was a little bit difficult now to keep your steed alive. Uh, and if you're going to invest a feat in being a mounted character, you don't want a dead horse. <laughs> so... Um, I, I feel like they need to do something about making that style of character work, uh, and this probably moves in the wrong direction. Observant, uh, I was fine with. Polar Master, of course, had a pretty big change that quarterstaffs and, and spears don't apply anymore, uh, but I'm okay with that change. Uh, Resilient is basically the same. Uh, Ritual Caster, I think, is too weak now. Sentinel, I thought, got a nice little boost. Sharpshooter, like with Great Weapon Master, I couldn't answer, so I said, I don't know. Shield Master, I mean, there was the clarification as to when you could do it. Otherwise, it's pretty similar. I thought it was fine. Uh, Skulker, I really liked the change to Skulker, so uh, I gave that uh, very satisfied. I just think it's a lot more clear how it's supposed to work now. Speedster, um, it basically is based off the mobile feat. I don't know why they changed it and gave it a dumb name, uh, but mechanically, I thought it was fine. Spell Sniper, uh, again, hard to answer. It is potentially too weak, uh, but I really think it depends when we see spells, how often are we going to be making those spell attack rolls? And that will make a difference. Warcaster, I think, is probably too powerful now, uh, and weapon training too weak. So I wrote down there are a number of feats that I will need context in order to know if there's something I'm satisfied with. That context has not been provided yet, which is unfortunate because it prevents me from giving useful feedback. But there are a few specific notes. Athlete, dual wielder, ritual caster, and weapon training seem weaker than the other options. Epic boons don't feel epic enough. Warcaster is probably too good now. It really didn't need the ability score bonus. Great weapon fighting has a clunky mechanic, and I was hoping to see that improved. I'm confused how crossbow experts dual wielding is supposed to interact with the ammunition weapon property. I would love if the wording here was clarified so we know how it's supposed to work. Because, I mean, it is possible their intention is that you're 
you know, holding two hand crossbows and shooting them every round. Uh, if that's what they want to do, fine, but they need to make it a little more clear that you can do that because the ammunition property wouldn't allow you to do that. How satisfied were you overall with the spell list as presented in the article? I don't know. Um, I do not know. Uh, it is very difficult to answer that uh, without seeing the classes that are going to have access to these spell lists. Um, we don't know what happened with Eldritch Blast, if it's going to be a Warlock class feature, I don't know. Um, or if it's being removed from the game. Uh, we just don't know for sure. Uh, so th this one is really hard to answer. How satisfied were you with the elements of the rules glossary section as presented in the article? So I'm going to think about these ones and I'll come back after a quick edit. Okay, so I'm going to go through my answers here. I'm not going to go into detail on my satisfied. Um, I don't, you know, have a lot to say about why artisan's tools or something I'm satisfied with. Um, but ability checks, I said satisfied. Armor training, satisfied. Artisan's tools, satisfied. The attack action, I said, I don't know. And I'll go over why when I read my additional comments. Uh, attack roll, I'm satisfied. Arcane spells, I don't know. Um, and, and that's true of all the spells. This is basically the same thing. I need more context. Um, I really liked the design of the new spells. So bark skin, uh, I was very satisfied. I like that they gave um, more clarification on how special senses are supposed to work. So blind sight, I was really satisfied. Uh, climb speed, creature type, uh, satisfied with. D20 tests. Um, so the big change there is they got rid of the critical hit rules they had in the first play test, which I'm good with. Um, I wish they would try some other interesting things rather than just say, ah, just use your player's handbook. Um, but the old player's handbook version is fine. So I'm satisfied with it. Uh, dash action, fine. Difficult terrain, fine. Divine spells, same thing. Uh, exhausted condition, I really like the new exhausted condition. condition so I get very satisfied. Uh, expertise is basically the same. Fly speed, gaming sets, all satisfied. Uh, I like the new grapple condition, so I was very satisfied. I like the new guidance spell, so I was very satisfied. Help action and heroic inspiration, I was fine with. Uh, the hidden condition and hide, I said, I don't know, because there is still problems with the wording. Uh, I like that they're trying to make it so that we are would know how hide works, but it needs more work um, because there's unanswered questions. Uh, incapacitated, fine with that. I like the new uh, actions like influence, study, and search. Uh, so I gave them all very satisfied. The invisible condition um, has the same interesting interaction where if you can be seen, you still get advantage and disadvantage. Um, but anyway, I'm fine with that. Uh, the jump action, I was really kind of mixed on this one. I don't like it that you can just do infinite jumps with your move or as many jumps as you like. I also am not sure I like it being an action. I am I kind of wonder if it maybe should just be like you can only jump once during your move or something like that. Um, overall, I think it's probably an improvement to make it an action over what it is now. So I did say I'm satisfied. I like the new light weapon property. So I gave that very satisfied. Uh, long rest was fine. Magic action was fine. Move I didn't like. Um, move now limits you to one type of movement with your move. And I, I just feel that's overly restrictive. Uh, so I am dissatisfied with that. Um, musical instruments satisfied. Uh, primal spells, same thing. Spell lists. Uh, ritual casting. Um, big change there. Uh, and I think I'm okay with it. Uh, search action I liked. Short sword as a light weapon I'm fine with. Slowed condition I liked. Study action I liked. Uh, swim speed, tool proficiency, teleportation. All fine with that. I like that they're uh, clarifying Tremor Sense and Unarmed Strike. Uh, these aren't changed from the previous playtest, but I like them both then. I like them both now. Uh, so here's what I said. I said, I appreciate there's more focus on how hiding works, but there are still uns unanswered questions. Can I hide if my ally can see me? This seems to be no right now, but I don't know why. Uh, then we have the attack action needs more clarification. Can I draw or stow before any single attack or each attack? Uh, the wording is unclear. Uh, then some things I really like that I hope you keep include the new study, search, influence actions, clarifications on special senses, the exhausted condition, the light weapon property, and both spell redesigns. Like all that, those things. 
Uh, and I'm not a fan of the new move rule that restricts you to one type of movement. All right, so for skills, I'm satisfied with them. I like that they've specified that unless they say otherwise, uh, using a skill is an action. I think that's good. Um, and the difficulty class, uh, I'm fine with. Uh, but I basically, I said, I like the clarification and rules for study, search, and in influence. I think those are all well done. Comments on the Barkskin spell is presented in this Unearthed Arcana. Way better than the old version. The old version was really weird. The new version seems clear to use and makes sense for the theme of the spell. Comments on Guidance spell as presented in this Unearthed Arcana. I said, I like Guidance being a reaction rather than a die you give out. Not sure, though, if the restriction to once per creature per long rest is too restrictive. Um, I, I really think I'm going to need to play with that. It seems restrictive, but then again, when I think about it, maybe one guidance is enough. But I'm not sure it needs that restriction at all. Like, I'm not sure how this gets abused. Again, without, you know, doing it with this, these rules for a significant amount of time, I don't think I'll be able to be certain on that. But it being a reaction, I'm totally good with. How satisfied are you with the elements of the help action as presented in the article? I said, assisting ability check, I was satisfied. Uh, the one difference is you have to be proficient in the skill. I think I'm good with that. Uh, and then assisting attack roll, very satisfied because I like the clarification to assisting attacks. I never knew if it was the next attack by a specific ally or any ally. Uh, it now says... You momentarily distract an enemy within five feet of you, granting advantage to the next attack roll by one of your allies. Uh, so you are picking the ally, or at least that's the way I read it. How satisfied are you with the elements of heroic inspiration as presented in the article? So now what they're having you do is you gain heroic inspiration if you roll a one instead of roll a 20. Uh, I like that they're trying new things, and overall, I think it's fine. I have some issues with the idea of mining it. But um, I probably prefer it being a 1 to a 20. Uh, and only one at a time, yeah, I'm fine with that. Overall, I don't have a whole lot to say on it. Um, you know, I was really iffy on the 20 to gain inspiration. But then I played with it, and I found it was kind of fun. Uh, so uh, I, I don't think I have a lot to offer on this one. How satisfied are you with the elements of the influence actions presented in the article? I thought they did a great job here. Um, yeah, so there were three elements. There was attitude, so they clarify what each attitude does uh, right under the influence action, so you don't have to hunt for it. Uh, interaction and ability check. It, it was all laid out really well. I just said, I really like all aspects of this. How satisfied are you with the elements of a long rest as presented in the article? Not significant changes here, so I, I'm fine with it. How satisfied are you with the elements of move as presented in the article? I'm okay with all of it, except for how they handle special speeds. I don't like how you can only do one kind of movement now. So if I want to move and then climb, I need to dash. All right, any additional comments? So what I want to put here is I have just cut and pasted this from the letter I wrote. Uh, because we don't know what your design goals are, we're not discussing these changes in ways that are going to be productive to you. We're instead discussing our wild speculations as to why you made this change. Maybe you want weapons to do less damage. Maybe you felt the minus five wasn't fun at the table. Maybe you want spellcasters to be more powerful compared to non-spellcasters. Maybe you want to tone down the power combination of crossbow expert, sharpshooter, and a hand crossbow. Maybe the plan is to take all the more powerful options and pull them back to the point where they're more in line with the other options. Maybe that's just for weapons, or maybe we can expect the same treatment for spells. When it comes to answering, if we're satisfied with this change, how can we be without knowing the answer to these questions? If the design goal is to have all our options for our characters be just about making the character we envision without having some options dramatically better than others, then I am terrifically satisfied. If the intent is to make just weapon use worse compared to spellcasting, then I am terrifically unsatisfied. And the rest of the questions were just like uh, identification questions. So that is my filling out of the expert classes survey. I really hope that the uh, survey gets some changes uh, at some point. I wish they'd provide a little more context to why they're making the changes so that I know if I agree with them or not. Um, but that's the survey. And uh, I will be filling out all the surveys regardless. And you should too. So 
check out this survey on D&D Beyond right now and fill it in and let them know what you think. Uh, otherwise, until next time, I'm going to sit back, relax, and have some fun. D&D is for everyone. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon.